SailorWrite.com for your project supplies, tools, and instructions. In this video, we're going to show you how to replace the fabric on a cheap roller shade we bought from a department store using materials from SailRite. This video is part of our Airstream Argosy renovation. We'll be renovating an Airstream from top to bottom, inside and out. Join us for this exciting video series. In this first chapter, we'll show you how to prepare your roller shade for the new fabric. So we have a tear to fit roller shade that we bought at a uh, department store. And these are very inexpensive and the fabric on them is usually not that great. It's really cheap. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna replace the fabric um, with a uh, whatever we'd like. And in our situation, we're gonna replace it with a Fibertex Plus. This brand has a uh, E-clip kind of like on it and you just remove it. Some brands don't have that. And I don't think you use that again. We're gonna unroll this all the way. This is that fabric that feels kind of like a heavy duty trash bag, in my opinion. So we're taking this off and I've already put an arrow here on the fabric with a marker because we're going to throw this out anyway, uh, indicating uh, which way the fabric was put on. And then when I take this off of the fabric, I'm also going to put the arrow on the uh, rod going that same direction. So I'm just going to mark on the rod. So that arrow and that arrow basically are going the same direction. Then I can remove the fabric. Now you may also want to use the slat at the bottom. If I can get it out, let's see, push it out. Yeah, there we go. Or you can install your own wooden slat because this one's kind of chintzy. It's kind of hollow, but it will work. So we want to make our shade 25 inches. Um, so all you do is you just push this in and uh, I'm going to make it uh, 25 inches, the fabric that is. So basically from the metal here to the metal end here, 25 inches. That's what I'd like. In this chapter, we're going to show you how to cut your fabric to size. Okay, the desired finish size of our shade is 25 inches wide by 35 inches in length. I like to add 7 inches uh, for excess fabric around the roller. That just keeps it on the roller so you never pull it off to the double-sided tape. And then we need to create a sleeve at the bottom and it will count for one and three quarter inches for that. So I need to cut my fabric to 43 and three quarter by 25. This is Pfeiffertex Plus fabric. You'll notice it's a mesh fabric and you can kind of see through it a little bit. It does provide uh, privacy at, in the daylight hours. Um, we are only ordered a yard, so it's 36 inches by its original width of 54 inches. So I'm gonna cut the 24 or 25 inches this way and the height this way um, because you can you can do it either way with this fabric uh, it doesn't have a pattern i'm using a double-sided cutting mat from sarah right here this is a very thick cutting mat for a rotary cutter it's uh, pretty cool this is the factory edge and what i want to confirm is that the factory edge uh, is nice and straight and kind of finished and it does look like it is if i put it up here to the uh, markings on the um, a cutting pad it looks nice so I'm going to use this as my reference to make sure that all the sides are vertical to this I'm placing a t-square along that uh, factory edge here so it's nice and straight this is the edge that's cut by Sayerite it's not as straight so I'm going to mark it and usually Pfeiffer text depending on the color marks fairly well with a pencil the pencil doesn't mark well you can use uh, the scribe ball we have one in a white and a black, and it marks pretty well. So this is my 43 and 3 quarter here, so I'm marking it there. Now we know where to, how to cut the size and where to stop cutting. So I've got the clear acrylic ruler over top of my line, and I'm going to use this rotary cutter. And I like to put the ruler on the good side of the fabric, and you want to do this as carefully as possible because this is the raw edge of your shade.
I'm just marking the width at 25. And I'll mark it in a few spots and I'll strike a line there. A number two pencil works pretty well on marking this Fifertex fabric. We want to make sure that, uh, that we're square, so we're going to measure corner, corner to corner diagonally. And I get 50 and 3 eighths for this corner. And hopefully we get the same here. If we're not, we're going to have to make some modifications. Yep, 50 and 3 eighths. In this next chapter, we're going to be adding the sleeve for our bottom rod. I'm using a clear acrylic ruler and I'm marking a line that's one inch up because we're going to create a half inch hem. This is the first step of our sleeve uh, for the, uh, the uh, slat that goes in here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use seam stick for canvas. And I know this is not a canvas, this is a vinyl, but it sticks really well. And this uh, double-sided tape from Sayerite is an acrylic glue, not a rubber glue, which means it will not yellow. Peel off the transfer paper, and I like to start in the middle, and I'm going to fold this over to the line, creating our half-inch hem. Notice how everything sticks. So I can take it to the sewing machine and sew the sleeve in without anything moving. This is the Sayrite Canvas Patterning Ruler, and I use it by putting my finger on the metal part here. And then I can crease the fabric well with that double-sided tape, and it really is going to stay down well. I'm going to now measure up two and a half inches here and strike another line. And we're going to fold that uh, uh, edge up to this line to create our nice pocket. Again, I'm going to use double-sided tape right on top of this uh, hem that we just created. Then I'm going to start in the middle and fold up pretty much right on top of that uh, line that we've struck down. Then I'm going to sight down, make sure it looks straight, and it does. We can take measurements diagonally if you want to be sure. Crease it well. And then before we do anything, you want to be assured that your, um, your rib's going to fit in there. And we're going we're gonna to sew this, but the double-sided tape will also kind of impede with this. But hopefully we've made it big enough that we can get it in. Yeah, it's going to go in. It's a little bit on the stubborn side, but because of that double-sided tape, but definitely I can get it in. Okay, so I'm going to sew this with either a V69 or a V92 thread. Um, I'm using a V92, and I'm going to do a little bit of reversing here. And you notice that I'm about an eighth inch away from the fold. Okay. This is a really easy material to sew, and I'm sewing it with about a six millimeter straight stitch. You can do five if you'd like, but six millimeter is my preference. I've already set tension. If you use V69 thread, use a size number 16 or 18 needle. I'm using 92, so I'm using a size number 20 needle. When I get to the end, I'm going to do a little bit of reversing. And there we are, we're done. Next up, attaching the fabric to the roller shade. Now we're gonna reduce this telescoping pole down to the width of our fabric. And we are gonna make sure that it's a little bit long by about an eighth inch over here where the tube ends, because I'd rather have more roll than I, or more rod than I do fabric. And then I'm gonna place double-sided tape. It's gonna roll like this on so I'm going to put double-sided tape. See that little um, basically joint? I'm going to put it on this side of that joint. That way we can use the joint as a reference uh, to where the shade material goes on straight. So this is seam stick for canvas. Even though it is a vinyl, so that's okay. It's more, it's got more aggressive uh, sticky tape. I'm going to push it down well, and then I'm going to peel off uh, the transfer paper revealing the glue, 
and then I'm going to put this uh, centered on the fabric and I'm going to roll my fabric around and I'm going to start at the center. Here it's a little it's sticky now. So it's centered and I'm going to stick it right on that line and make sure that it's going on straight according to that joint in the tube. That side's on and we'll do it over here. Good. Now we'll roll it up. And we'll make sure that our fabric doesn't stick out of the edges and the, yep, that's perfect. So we have plenty of hardware space here on this side and we have a little bit more over here, which is not a big deal because I'll just position my brackets. Uh, if you wanted to correct that, you could, but for our application, it's going to be great. So this can be under tension from um, the factory. I'm going to release the tension so we can actually put our own tension onto it. And to do that, all I need to do is basically, now this is going to twirl fast, so move your fingers out of the way is go like that and now there, it's under no tension at all so we can tension it once we get it on our brackets. I'm going to put my slat in about uh, an eighth inch from the edge or a quarter inch from the, both edges so right there I'm that way on both edges. This slat just easily cuts with scissors. Um, some of them will take a hacksaw if you get a wooden slat but we can just tuck and I'm not using uh, good scissors I'm using older scissors. Okay, so now we can insert this into the sleeve. I'll start over here where the camera is. And remember there's double-sided tape in here, if so it's going to kind of stick to it. But I like that because that basically keeps the rib from moving out. So I'm using quite a bit of force here. I'm putting my thumb here to make sure that I stabilize the fabric. And it's definitely going in with some force. She ain't going to come out of there. To get it shoved in there, I'm just going to use some of the scrap that I cut. And there we go. It's nice and buried in there. So you can see that an edge cut with a rotary cutter is clean, but you do get some polyester that shows out of the uh, core of where it's coated. And I don't like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the Cerite tempered cutting uh, glass for hot knife at the bottom edge and I'm going to use a hot knife and I'm going to go over the edge. Now you want to do this rather quickly because you don't want to burn the edges of the vinyl much, but just going over the edge like this really quickly will resolve that issue completely. So here is the finished result after the hot knife. You can see a little bit of a burnt edge, but it's very, very minute and we have no more of that fibrish uh, sticking out. Next up, installing the roller shade in the RV. So we have one of the brackets installed on this end and I made sure that the uh, shade would be centered. So now I'm going to take the opposite bracket. So I'm going to position it like this and uh, put it on the, uh, the post. Like that. And then I'm going to mark the position with a pencil just so that I know where the bracket is supposed to go here, here. So that is my position. So with the bracket, I'm going to, my L bracket's not very, uh, doesn't come out very far. So I have to keep this bracket as close as possible to the edge of the L bracket here. So I'm going to mark the holes. You can use a Sharpie or whatever, and, and then we'll drill holes. The brackets came with these really cheap screws. Um, I'm going to use self-tapping screws since I'm going through aluminum. These would be fine for drywall if you use an anchor. 
uh, but we're in an RV, so we're going to use this and we're going through an aluminum uh, L bracket. Nice. We're in the hole. That's going nowhere. So this this is a standard roll with the fabric uh, against the door, so you can do it that way, or you can reverse it around and do it this way. This is a reverse roll. We're going to do a standard roll. So I'm going to take the this one end has a post, and the other end obviously has a bar, uh, and we're going to slide the post into the hole of the bracket, and then the bar into the bar section of the bracket. Okay, so now that is installed. Now we're going to tension this because it's not under any tension. So it's under no tension. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it down about a foot. Now I know I want more tension than that, so I'm going to go about two, 20 inches down, somewhere around there. And then what I'll do is I'll take it out by working on the end with the, not the uh, round, but the uh, post. Okay, and then what I do is I roll this up by hand, not being in the bracket. And I'm gonna roll it all the way to the top here. And you can apply whatever amount of tension you want by doing this. Um, obviously, if I want to do it again and have more tension, I just take it and I roll it down more. Let's see what this does now. So now, if I pull down, that works pretty nice. It covers the window completely. Now, does it have enough tension to go up all by itself? No, not really. Because of that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have it go up. So yeah, we need a lot more tension. So what I'll do is I'll just leave it this and I'll pull it down another 12 inches, take it out. This time I'm not going to roll it all the way up. I'm going to roll it uh, probably another 12 inches or so. And then we'll put it back in because I know it's already got some tension. Like that. Now, let's see what happens so I can... That is exactly what I want. Something that doesn't fly up like a son of a gun. I can come down all the way here and then I just pull down a little bit and it goes all the way up. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Now the next job will be to make a balance for this to hide all of this hardware. And here's a look at our finished roller shade with the balance installed. Next up, a list of the materials and tools we use to accomplish this project. If you enjoyed this video, click the link in the description below or at the icon at the top right to check out other projects in the Airstream Argosy Renovation Series.